all right so in this video we are going to install the redis container which is going to be a service which we are use which we will use to you know uh, cache things right so in our docker compose yml as we have done previously we will add a service i'll call it cache the container name i'll keep it as why don't we copy this cache okay um again very similar to postgres i'm going to just define the image i don't want any custom configuration so what's the latest on redis let's just look at that um hey by the way i'm using it so much so why don't we start it right so yeah that's done I'll just hit redis again uh, do this one as well okay um the stable one it seems to be okay five is no there's no stable one i guess it's rc rc so we will use four zero one one okay so image name is redis four point zero point one one ports okay now here's one thing i already have redis on my laptop if you see i'm inside my desktop and if i do redis cli i have redis running right but i wanted that as a server i mean service so i'll what i'll do is i'll say 63790 on my server points to 637 nine the reason is um the in in my previous video i told you the table plus can you know connect to postgres um uh, but it also can connect to redis okay redis as a you know database engine and i can when i have that server running service running sorry i can connect to the the redis database so that's the reason i am keeping it at nine and then zero otherwise i'll have to connect to my local database so yes i have this and i think that's all we will need to you know run the service so i'll stop the two containers for now okay they're down and then i'll do docker compose up i should have it up yeah okay so with this now i have my cache running now again uh, as i had mentioned earlier everything in here is happening almost instantaneously on my machine because i have all the images downloaded on my machine okay i have configured and i have double checked everything before you know i was i'm creating this tutorial and so everything is ready for me but when you will run these commands you might have to wait for the images to you know get downloaded and uh, yeah so that's the thing okay so where was i if i do docker container ls we can see all these three containers running okay up 44 seconds the mappings are also visible you know this is my cache six three seven nine zero is pointing to six three seven nine now this is the postgres and this is my apache running on port 80 so i wanted to show you that you know first of all we can connect to redis and i have no uh, you know, database in here right now and also i can connect to the redis container okay so cache and i can do redis cli to get in here now we would want our laravel application to be configured to use caching driver redis so i will change this host is going to be cache because my service name is uh, cache 
the port is fine because my redis container is running on port 6379 okay with this thing done my application can use redis but how do we confirm that it's actually running right um, i have monitor running is it monitor or is it monitor all redis monitor all no so it's monitor Let's see CLI. okay so this is running and i'll need to go to the documentation once and let's see what's the syntax for you know caching something forever so i'll hit <coughs> cache and uh, this oh by the way i'll need to also install p redis as my caching driver so composer require p redis okay let's add that while we look for forever hmm. remember remember forever right so inside our web.php this route what i'm gonna do is dollar users equals cache eliminate support for size cache um, what's that remember forever i'll need to define a key so user list okay and this is a closure in this i'll return this okay so i don't need this so what we are saying is if we have this if this is cached in a sense then that will be returned and we don't execute this database command and we return it right so let's see if we have period is installed it is downloaded right so monitor is on if i go to this page and hit refresh right the cache is created and undefined variable user okay must have made some mistake yeah Oops. users so yeah we have this from cache okay um just to ensure that we are talking about the same thing what we can do is we can run php artisan migrate refresh seed okay migrate mig migrate seed right and we have done the migration if i go to uh where is the new tab or a connection i need to close it is it um right so homestead database users the first one is some professor sage something something and in here we have something different right why because this is coming from cache so now if i do php artisan cache clear so this does a flush db and now once we refresh we see the correct user data so which means the cache was created and on the subsequent refreshes we will see that the cache was set select one and we are using the user list so yes you know uh, with all these things in place if we look at our docker compose we have our three services running you know, the cache the db and the web we have all the containers you know, listed here they are up and running for more than six minutes now and yeah we are ready to get started with our development the only thing uh, pending right now is the elastic search container which i'm going to 
do eventually but yeah uh, in, in my subsequent videos but yeah so far we have the you know uh, laravel container running with all these three services this is what you can you know pretty much use for any of your uh, laravel project where you know at any point of time if you feel that you know your machine is not um, you know as per the requirement of the laravel version for example um, you know you are still on php 7.1 maybe and you need php 7.2 or you are on an older version like php 7.0 you can always use that so the basic idea is you have the docker compose yml on the root folder of the laravel application okay not the public folder but on the root so that you know it's not accessible and then you have a docker data uh, sorry docker folder in which the only folder right now we have is web because we have customized it so we have a docker file for it otherwise uh, you know if you see for uh, the db and cache we don't have anything so yeah with these two folders you are good to go you know you can configure the port and it should be all running fine so yeah that's how we have a laravel application on docker Thanks for watching guys. If you like the video, do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.